What is going on YouTube and Weight Loss Warriors? It's your boy C-Dub and I'm back with another video. Today guys, I want to talk about autophagy and I'm going to do it right after this. Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy C-Dub and I got a topic for you today. But first, if it's your first time clicking on the channel, I lost 125 pounds using intermittent fasting and the OMED method, eating just one meal a day. Welcome to my channel. I hope at the end of this video, you want to become a weight loss warrior and you subscribe. For all of you that already have subscribed and come check me out all the time, I appreciate your support and love. Autophagy is a epic topic in the fasting community. We hear about it all the time. A lot of YouTubers, a lot of people out there will drop, well I do it because of autophagy or I do this because of autophagy. People will talk about it. Um, you'll hear different stuff in different places and it can get confusing and overwhelming and, and a lot of people don't really understand what it is, how to get into it, how long it takes and it just, it, it's not something that I think that we fully can grasp. So what I'm going to try to do today is I'm going to try to break it down and help you out. So let's hop right into it, guys. So what is autophagy? Autophagy means to eat thyself. That's how simple it is. And when you first hear the word eat thyself, it puts you back a little bit and it makes you say, wait a second, why would I ever want to eat myself or why would I want myself to eat myself? That doesn't sound good. And then it brings back the stuff that you heard growing up that if you don't eat your dinner, you know, you're going to go into starvation mode and it's going to eat your muscles and it's going to break it down. And here in the fitness industry, when we're... We have really two kinds of people. We have people that are losing weight and we have people that love building muscle and working out. And sometimes they're the same or they intermix, but those are two really important parts of the weight, uh, the weight loss and, and fitness community. And so if you're one of those guys that are on the, the weight growing side, you want to lift weights, you're always talking about, I want to get bigger, bigger, bigger. Last thing you want to do is eat your own self because then you're getting smaller. And so it kind of can turn those guys off completely and it can push them out of fasting and then other people think they're getting autophagy because they, they fast you know for 16 hours a day and they say well I'm getting autophagy benefits and yay for me and I don't know that they're right either so I want to try to break it down as simple as possible so I don't want to get into the the mTORs and all the, the the crazy science that goes into exactly every little detail of why things happen the way they do I just want to give you the facts so that you can kind of understand it a little bit better. So when we are eating ourselves, what we're actually doing when we're talking about autophagy is we are taking the bad cells in our body and we're recycling them. So our body, when we have been deprived of food, basically goes into a mode that is a, uh, a mode of, of self-eating or cannibalism, and it goes in and it attacks something because it needs to pull nutrition out of somewhere so it is looking for food there is no food so it goes to cells and starts to eat them well it's not going to eat a big muscle cell it's not going to eat a cell that it really needs or feels is useful that makes zero sense what it's going to do is it's going to turn around and it's going to eat the cells that are not functioning right that are older and every cell we have in our body has um, a life expand and so that, that cell can expand, it can live longer or it can live shorter. And sometimes it's doing well and sometimes it's not. And autophagy will come in and it will recognize that. And sometimes it will clean the cell up and allow it to live longer and have a longer life expectancy. But other times it will just recycle that cell altogether and eat it and then use that cell for energy. And these cells can come from our heart, our brain, our lungs, all over our body. And those are good things because we have plaque that builds up in our heart. And if it's eating that plaque, and then using it for energy, now your chances of a heart attack are going to be reduced. If it goes into your brain and eats that plaque, guys, then your Alzheimer's is going to be reduced. And I, I want to say that I heard that in, if you have a loss of a memory and like a bad situation where you go to a doctor and you've had a hiccup and they look at your brain, there's generally ten, five to ten years of plaque buildup in your brain before you had that issue. So eating the, the cells in your brain is huge it's something that all of us want and of course obviously the heart we have over nine million people die a year of heart disease if you can use autophagy to stop that from happening to you that's an amazing thing so 
eating itself is not a bad thing and it does not go and eat your muscles. We have protections against that. And if you just think about how we evolved and where we came from as people, there are plenty of times when we did not have access to food. So our body had to figure out a way to adjust to that and it created autophagy through our evolution. And that's an amazing and wonderful thing. So how do we get there? How long does it take? Why should we do it? Those are the questions we, we want to know today. And so I'm going to try to help you out with them. Basically, there are people that say, well, you get on autophagy every single time you go to sleep at night. And to some degree, you do heal at night and 12-hour fast and things like that. Yeah, maybe, maybe you know, you, you've done some, some little teeny bit of healing. But your body is not going to attack a cell at that point because you still have stored energy from when you ate. So if we think about what, what, we're, what we're talking about here is any time you put food into your mouth, your body's going to turn that food into glucose or sugar and it's going to store them all over your body. It stores it in your muscles, it stores it everywhere. And it's all through your blood and then all the things that you're doing after that point, your body is attacking, not attacking, it's transferring that sugar into energy that allows you to run or, or to play or to stay awake or to write that paper or to do work or whatever it is you do. And your body is constantly doing that after you eat. But at a certain period of time, you run out of the food for it to burn. So when we're talking about autophagy, that's where we want to be. That's the beginning of it. So I want to say my viewers come from different areas and different diets and different ideas. So each one has its own path towards autophagy. So I kind of want to break that down slightly here. I want to say that if you're a keto person, your whole point of keto is so that your body learns how to not raise its insulin so it learns not to run on glucose so that your body switches and runs on body fat and so if you're used to running your body on body fat you will get to ketosis obviously and be able to stay in ketosis through your diet and because you're already in that state autophagy can happen for you faster than it is somebody that eats carbs especially on a standard American diet with carbs if you're just eating carbs all day long you're eating six meals or three big meals or whatever the case is just like we've always done there's no fasting and you want to get into autophagy it's going to take you exponentially longer than it will somebody that's doing the same amount of eating and staying in ketosis at all times so with that said then we have fasters and we have people that do it in all different levels from warriors to omad to 16 and 8 and all of those people and some do it with keto and some do it without keto and that's where everything gets super confusing so I'm going to try to break it down as simple as possible. Let's start with OMAD and guys like me. So I eat one meal a day and I eat whatever I want during that meal. So I do have carbohydrates. But because I've done it and I've done it for so long, I've tested my blood and, and done all of those things. I will always make ketosis by the next day at dinner. It's just something my body's not used to doing. I burn through the glycogen. I normally walk fasted. All of those things my body has adapted to and gotten used to and it knows how to run now and it knows how to switch between fat and, and carbs. My body switches between fat and carbs and it does it relatively easy. Some people out there, especially people with type 2 diabetes or insulin resistant, their bodies don't switch well back and forth between fat burning and, and storage mode. They're constantly in storage mode. So that person versus me that's a big difference and if you're new to OMAD you may still be the person that is stuck in that uh, fat I mean in, in the storage burning mode an example of that is I remember the first fast that I went on the first long-term fast that I went on I said to myself I, I had the little ketone pea strips and I said to myself I'm not going to eat until I see ketosis and it took three days guys I fasted for 72 hours before I got into ketosis that's how carb driven my body was so if you are eating carbs on a regular basis and if you don't switch well between the two modes, it is going to take you exponentially longer to get there. So the fastest way is of course doing a little keto, but you can do it through eating carbs or whatever else. It doesn't really matter. And the healthier you eat, the quicker it's going to go too, to a degree, but you also have to understand that autophagy doesn't happen if your body has nutritious things in it. And that's where things can get a little bit hairy too. So if you're eating well with proteins and vegetables, your body's got all the nutrition it needs, it's going to take a little bit longer to kick into autophagy than somebody that's eating fat. Although fat isn't as good for you, nutritious wise, as whether they want to say it is or not, as protein and vegetables are, because fat doesn't have those nutritions, 
it allows it to adjust more into, oh my God, we are in autophagy and, and we need to roll. So now let's break down the time periods and talk about the real, the real issue that all of you want to know is what you personally need to do to get into autophagy. And of course, I'm going to throw the disclaimer up there and say, guys, it's different for all of us. I can't tell you how long it's going to be for you to be in autophagy. Um, you might be doing everything right and you might be insulin resistant and it may take you longer than I say and on the other side you might already be adapted and it may go quicker. But if you are a fat adapted person, if you're a person that does not run completely on carbohydrates and you're already an intermittent faster, it's going to happen much quicker. You can get there in 24 hours guys. So that's the good news. Um, if you are a intermittent faster but you're still a little insulin resistant it's going to take you maybe upwards of 48 hours and if you're eating just anything you want and you want to hit those autophagy benefits it's generally going to be 72 hours you have to have burned through all of your reserve energy all the sugars and everything in your body and you have to get into a nutrition deficit in order to increase and create autophagy so in 2016 the Nobel Prize for uh, science was the fact that this autophagy is there and so why you want to get yourself into this why you want to suffer through the 72 hours or the 48 hours or the 24 hours um, why you would want to suffer through that is, is something that we're going to tackle into now but I first want to say that I understand that that's just getting to autophagy you have to stay in autophagy and let it do some recycling guys so and then you can stay in too long so but why do you want to be there guys you want to be there because of the eating of all of those things because of the attacking of diseases all of us should want to get into autophagy a couple of times a year so guys it's not something you have to do every day it's not something that you need to um, establish uh, uh, through your fasting uh, weekly it is something you need to do long term. There is some thought process that people that use a lot of autophagy while they're losing massive amounts of weight that they have less loose skin. There's no real science behind that. There's, the, the science of it is all relatively new but it is there and I do think and believe that all of the benefits of autophagy are true and you do uh, benefit in amazing ways. But I think if you did it four times a year you did a 72 hour fast most of you have already been fat adapted even if you're not that'll get you there at least once and then by the time you get to the next quarter if you continue on your dieting and your intermittent fasting and your OMAD you'll get there the next time and I think if you did it four times a year your body will have enough time to recycle through all of its parts and fix the things it needs to fix so that you can you know live a little bit longer a little bit more healthy life hopefully eat some of those things that we don't want in our body out so I think that you could do it uh, a 72 hour fast uh, a couple of times a year there are people that think you should do a seven day fast once a year um, I think if you've got the right you know you talk to a doctor and you got some medical supervision uh, maybe hitting a seven day fast could be something beneficial for you uh, one time a year and that could probably substitute for the, thir the four 72 hour fast so it really depends on what you want to do, but you've got to take in zero calories during that time. Don't mess with any, anything that you shouldn't mess with. Stick to just water. Really allow your body the break it needs. Get rid of everything that's inside of it and allow your body to do the autophagy the way that it was meant to be. So guys, I know it's a little bit of a long one. I kept all of the major science out of it because every time I hear it, I, I think that it just bores me. So I, I know that it probably bores a lot of you out there. Um, what, why do we need to know what the word mTOR is? What we need to know is that if we fast and we do it for 72 hours, we're definitely going to be in autophagy. And if we are a little bit better with our, our eating habits, we can get there in 48 or even 24 hours. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you kind of can engage where you're at in your eating world and what you need to do to hit autophagy. And I hope that you guys consider it. Make sure you do, uh, speak with a doctor before you do anything. And guys, I know you see my face over here, guys. You've got to hook me up and click on it. Hopefully become a weight loss warrior. I appreciate it, guys. Leave me a comment down below. I'll talk to you on the next one. Peace.